Hi, I'm Michael Monahan from Beartooth. Today, with my co-founder and chief technology officer, Kevin Ames, we're going to introduce you to an extraordinary piece of technology for everyday people. We all love these $600 supercomputers that fit in the palm of our hand, but one thing stops them dead in their tracks. No service. What could be causing this? Congestion. Maybe you're at your favorite music festival, Coachella. Perhaps you're in a natural disaster, fire, hurricane, flood. Or perhaps you're just skiing on your favorite mountain. In fact, this was the inspiration for the creation of Beartooth. Kevin and I were skiing at Bridger Bowl in Bozeman, Montana, where there's no coverage. We got separated mid-morning and weren't able to reconnect till the end of the day. After swapping powder stories, we said, man, there's got to be a better way. Two things you should know about Kevin. He built his first ham radio when he was 14 years old, and he spent his entire career in instant command, first jumping out of airplanes as a smoke jumper, and second, building and maintaining critical communication systems for backcountry firefighters. We've taken the same principles that a backcountry firefighter uses to always communicate safely and brought it to your smart device. So we're often asked, gee, Mike, what about LTE? Now, I know the networks want you to believe this, but we're here to shed the truth for you. Network coverage looks like this, this, or even this. Out in Bozeman, where we're at, quite sporadic. In fact, 32% of America has no coverage, and 72% has inadequate coverage. Finally, a lot of people are looking for the simple solution. So we're asked, Michael, what about Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? So if you'll bear with me at our outdoor example, let's say we arrive at El Capitan. Bluetooth gets you to the car door. Wi-Fi, you can't even escape the porta potty But if you want to push your life's boundary and explore all the way up the mountain, Beartooth's multiple mile solution will work for you. I'm excited to let Kevin show you the advanced feature set, along with some help from Jeff Jones, our chief software architect. Thanks, Mike. Is it on? Let's go. OK. Thanks, Mike. So this is Beartooth. So what we've done is we've taken a battery and a software-defined VHF, UHF radio and put it in a protective case. The software-controlled or software-defined radio allows the feature set and limitations of the device to be completely controlled by the mobile device application. So this can be tailored to each specific use case. The phone docks into the case just like any other protective case you're used to seeing. A small antenna retracts, allowing you to use it. And once it's in there, you have the ability to push the talk style, voice communications, texting, and geolocation information. When you're not using it, the antenna can retract back in so it's not in the way. So at this time, let's go ahead and do a voice demonstration. Jeff, can we bring up the Elmo, please? Awesome, man. Well, I'll catch up with you later. Thanks. Once we got the audio cleared up there, you could hear what was going on. So what, what you, if you got, for those of you that could see Chris out in the back there who was hanging out, uh, he was using a regular off-the-shelf walkie-talkie. This is demonstrating the Beartooth device's capability to be cross-compatible with walkie-talkies you can buy at Walmart today. Um, it's, it works with uh, VHF and UHF, commercial and mobile radios, as well as amateur radios. So this time, can we look at the text interface? Uh, what you see there is just a regular run-of-the-mill text interface that you guys are used to using and is very simple for the user to use, as well as our geolocation interface. So for here, you're located in the center, and as pins will start popping up of other Beartooth users in the area. The location information is transmitted over the device using a beaconing system or a pinging system. That concludes the demonstration. Thanks, Kev. I, was, I, I love watching that every time I see it. All right, so people want to understand what's the market for this. So it's broke up into four main quadrants. Consumer and amateur radio, construction, mining, industrial, police and first response, and military and government. Of course, we're not going to go after all those markets at once. We're going to drill down. Another couple things you should know. While we think that we've created a new consumer uh, electronics category, we do realize we're going to disintermediate two adjacent categories the $2 billion a year in backup and battery cases, and the $10 billion a year in two-way uh, two radios. How are we going to get there? Well, we're already hand-picking specialty, specialty retailers who we think are on brand with our authentic brand and developed a very targeted e-commerce strategy. Finally, people ask, where are you currently at? Well, we're actually building for a very special enterprise customer. 
but I didn't want to leave TechCrunch without doing something special for you. So, as a CEO, I got to pull out some of that inventory of our limited production run coming next spring and offer it to you. So please take a look at our website and grab that special offer. We've had a great time meeting a bunch of you, look forward to meeting more, and we'll love having you as customers. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Judges. Wow. Um, that was cool as shit. Thanks. Nice work. Um, I can't wait. To, I actually tried to buy one bef right before the session, and then I was like, wait a minute, will it fit like next generation of iPhones? So I, didn't, I didn't actually do it. Um, you mentioned all those markets. I think you were smart to say you're going to focus on one. Yep. What are you going to focus on, and how do you go to market on that market? Great. That market. So we've got a pre existing industrial customer. Uh, just given the nature of who they are, it's probably something we should talk to you about offline. They sort of like to. Uh, uh, not a customer that likes to be out in the open, but I'd love to cover it with you offline. Okay. But industrial, they're going after an industrial? A non-consumer, yeah. Okay, great, great. Um, are there any regulatory issues that you have to worry about? Absolutely. So we're a Part 95 device, and our lawyers are going to thank you for this. It allows me to remind everyone that uh, our device can't be sold until we receive Part 95 approval from the FCC, which we anticipate getting, but we haven't received yet. Okay. Great. Cool. What's your manufacturing plan? Great question. So we're talking to a couple of tier one uh, manufacturers um, and also a couple of tier two because we're trying to figure out if we want the resource of a tier one or sort of the, uh, the intimacy of a smaller tier two player. And I mean, this type of device becomes more useful with more apps. So what is your developer strategy? Great. So we'll have an open platform. We certainly don't have a software team that can write every app that's for it. So we look forward to welcoming, welcoming the developer community. When will that start up? <coughs> Uh, I don't think we've announced that yet, so we'll get back to you on that. I'd love to learn a bit more about the background of the team. Um, great. I'll give my background. I spent 15 years in capital markets. I started my career at Goldman Sachs. Um, Kevin and I have known each other from our first 15 minutes in the dorm in college. We've always wanted to do something together. Uh, we've been talking about things for a while, and that day at Bridger Bowl, we just saw this as a natural extension of his background. I'll let Kevin tell you what he's done his whole life. <laughs> I was an electrical engineering student in college. Uh, afterwards, I uh, worked wildland fire for a number of years. Uh, uh, ended my career there as a smoke jumper. And then uh, became a radio technician for the Forest Service, uh, maintaining wildland designing systems for uh, backcountry firefighters. Uh, so about the time we were skiing together and came up with this idea, uh, everything just seemed to fall right in the right place for it to start our company. So. And next question, do you have competition? That's a great question. And certainly, you have the pre existing radio market. You have the battery market. Um, so I don't think we have any direct competition, but I think that it would be naive to say there's not other players that will respond. Yeah. But nobody doing directly what we're doing. Uh, we, think, we, we certainly think people will, will respond in this category, though. Yeah. So um, I, I like the product. It's a very cool idea. H how do you make it more mass, though? I mean, uh, you're, gonna, you're going after very specific markets. Government being obviously a, a big one where uh, you're going after local governments for fire and for other things. But is, is, is there no possibility to get to a place where mass people just buy it for their families, for their homes and in general? Yeah. I mean, this was built on the front end as a consumer device. And it was reverse inquiry from the enterprise customers that came and got it. So a little bit like the iPhone came to market and re re replaced BlackBerry with a com consumer device being pulled by enterprise, that's what we've seen. So, you, so one bit of advice, I wouldn't even bring up the two-way radio market. It's kind of irrelevant. You guys yep. are creating something that, you know, it, it's so different from what the two-way radio market does today. And it also is, you're going to enable like millions, you know, you know, millions of more folks kind of on this platform because it makes it so much easier to implement than actually going out and buying two-way radios. And it looks so small. Yep. So I kind of wouldn't even bring it up because I, I immediately started questioning whether, well, whether the two-way radio market seems so small. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think... As I said, we think it's a new field category, but I think that people want at least just a barometer to start thinking. But I, I'll certainly take your advice and stop using it. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. You guys did a great job. It's super snazzy looking. Uh, that was Beartooth. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. We look Thank forward you. to seeing you soon. Thanks, guys.